I know we all left you. All right. <laughs> well, let's call this Board of Health meeting to order on April 24, 2018. Uh, I guess we don't have any visitors. We'll give them a minute or two until 5.35. Give them a moment. No. The, uh, you want to back into minutes while we're doing that, Mr. Chairman? Uh, we can approve minutes, sure. Might as well use that time, right? Absolutely. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes from our last meeting in, uh, let's see, what was the date? February 20th. February 20th. Right. Uh, we did one in March. We did not have one in March. Oh. Oh, wait, look at, are these different than what we were sent? No. Nope. Well, they're different than the last ones from March. The ones we, the, the ones that were the draft in March were not. Well, that's right. That means they're canceled. That's right. Yeah. That was only. No, these are different. No, than, I printed out the one that had. You printed out the previous on ones. One. Right. These ones were need for needed revision. Yeah. Yes. But the ones um, Kristen sent were the correct ones. Yes. Um, yes. Last Thursday. Yeah, I saw them. Yes. Right. Want me to pull them up on the? Uh, I, I've got them? I've got the ones that Kristen, Kristen sent. sent there. Yeah. Yeah, you guys had to review that? I already had a chance to review it, so I'm, yeah. I'm fine. You don't need to pull up my benefit. I just want to make sure that these. Uh, I didn't have any changes to um, the ones that Kristen sent over on Thursday, so I don't know if either one of you had some changes. No, they're fine with me. Okay. Um, make a motion to accept the minutes. Um, is this is the date right? The date's right, though, right? Yeah. Make a motion to accept the minutes um, from the February 20th uh, meeting. I second the motion. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of approving the February 20 minutes? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Uh, 3 0. And it looks like we do not have visitors at the time. Okay. So we can go right into my chair report. Uh, I guess the first thing I would like to say is the state legislation on the tobacco legislation. Uh, it has been changed from the past bill number that we had. It is now bill number HB4109. It has incorporated a few other bills, anti-smoking, a few different uh, aspects of the legislation has been framed into one, HB 4109, which is, has been recommended by the House Health Care Financing Committee to be approved. It has now been sent on to the Ways, House Ways and Means Committee. Uh, hopefully it does get a hearing on the floor. This new bill does, uh, it increases the sale of alcohol, uh, sale of tobacco to age 21 and it also restricts sales from healthcare establishments like pharmacies. Uh, it does kind of, uh, as far as what I read, it is a little short of restricting flavoring tobacco, uh, flavored tobacco uh, sales, but it is a step in the right direction and we'll have to see what happens with that. Um, when you say short, what, what, do you, uh, what do you see with it? What are they doing, uh, not doing? Well, what we did is we restricted sales of right. uh, flavored tobacco to uh, tobacco stores. Whereas, these, as far as I can tell, these, this state regulation does not do that. It's not going that far. Correct. Okay. Uh, so you'd be limited to the specific municipality, the rules of that municipality as far as flavored tobacco. But it would be a statewide 21 age and statewide restriction on sales in pharmacies, which be fine. The pharmacy still not business? I know a lot of them got out of that business a while ago, voluntarily. Well, CVS did uh, a couple of years ago. But there's Rite Aid and, and all those still do? Uh, if, it's allowed, did. if it's allowed in the town, I think a lot of them oh, do. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. I thought a lot of them moved away from that voluntarily. Uh, I, think, I think Walgreens still in certain municipalities do, and I think Rite Aid does. Yeah. CVS stopped like, two or three years ago. Sure, right. I remember yeah. they did, yeah. Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, so hopefully we'll keep an eye on that. I think that would, if it were to be brought to the floor, it would happen before, I think the session ends in June, the yeah. legislative uh, session. Yep. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, 
Uh, also, uh, romaine lettuce, you've probably heard the reports of romaine lettuce. I heard you can get a heck of a deal on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, CDC is warning all consumers to discard any romaine lettuce that either came from Arizona, Yuma, especially Yuma, Arizona, or if they're unsure of where it came from at all. Uh, the, it started out as packaged uh, romaine lettuce, you know, the, the package type. They have since extended it to all romaine lettuce, and heads of lettuce and whatever. Uh, pretty much because I, I think the original, uh, the original illness may have been caused by the package. They, they kind of, I think, spotlighted the packaged one. But then there was also an outbreak in a prison in uh, Alaska that they claim was caused by heads of lettuce. So then they just said, well, let's all, all lettuce, all romaine lettuce, let's just, unless you know where it came from, to just discard it. Okay. Uh, hopefully that will be over soon. Evidently the growing season in Arizona is, has ended. So I, as far as I'm aware, they won't be growing it anymore in Arizona. So whether it was the packaging or whether it was the, the picking or whatever this, wherever this happened, uh, hopefully it will be over soon as the growing season moves to California uh, for the warmer weather. So there probably won't be much Arizona lettuce, romaine lettuce around as of now. Also, as far as flu season, flu season is winding down. Uh, it was only, as of the last reporting period, which ended April 11th, there were only 11 states that had increased uh, flu reporting, of which Massachusetts was one, but uh, it's really winding down. Uh, the CDC still does recommend, while there is an active flu season, to get a vaccination. Uh, however, I don't think there are many vaccinations left out there. They're either expired or people don't have them. And flu season's winding down, and the, the, the time to, that it takes your immune system to gear up is probably 10 to 14 days, which would get us into May. So it, it, I, I don't want to say don't get one, but uh, it would be debatable what good it would have now. <coughs> flu shots, even though the CDC still recommends that this flu out there to get it, if you can. Uh, just, and, and as a board, uh, I'd like to maybe discuss, and if as part of the meeting and part of my report, uh, a plan for adult immunization as, as a town and as a board. Uh, some of the, uh, the CDC estimates that Kindergarten children, I would say, is around 90% effective, 90% uh, vaccinated against disease. They have met, 90% of children have their correct vaccination record. Uh, however, in adults, the numbers weren't quite as good. Less, less than half of adults get their flu shot annually. Uh, less than a quarter of adults that are at risk for pneumonia get vaccinated, and also other adult vaccines like the shingles vaccine and uh, pertussis, it's similar numbers, about a quarter of the adults are correctly vaccinated. So I would just again like to bring it up to the board, uh, do we want to have any type of program? And I know uh, we can we'll bring up as far as the public health nurse, which would be a big cog in that wheel is trying to, to get that information out. But do we as a board want to maybe start an awareness program or what would we like to do as far as increasing awareness in town about the, the importance of vaccinations for adults? Do you have any sense in, um, in folks that don't get vaccinated but their the reason just just don't or is there specific reasons? Do you have it, there's a lot of reasons. I mean some people <clears throat> just don't like needles. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people sort of fall through the cracks because they may see different physicians. They don't see a regular PCP on a regular basis. Uh, the, their PCP may not have their vaccination records, so they really don't know what they've had. The, the patients themselves, people themselves, don't, don't really remember know what they had. What they had. Uh, so there's, there's kind of a lot of reasons uh, of that. But the fact remains that a lot fewer people than should get vaccinated. 
Yeah, you know, you don't see much about it in like um, from a publicity standpoint, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure that's part of the problem as well too that it's not promoted. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, with with good information, Correct. obviously. I, I you know I never been, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw anything mm -hmm. uh, promoting any kind of vaccination, quite frankly, other than when um, um, the flu season comes around. Yep. You know, that's that's about it. Uh, every now and again, you see a commercial. I think for the, the shingles vaccination on TV. And that's about. Yep. that's about all I've seen. But. And you've probably seen people dancing on TV with the pneumonia. There's there's a couple of pneumonia vaccines. Uh, I haven't seen that. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> I just like John's rendition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if they can do something on the website, on the town's website, like something saying the CDC recommends. But are we going to be offering the different Well, and that's again that we? that's that would depend. I, I'd like to have some sort of a maybe discussion on a, a, an awareness program. Sure. Whether we, as the health department, would administer. I know several years ago we did administer shingles vaccines. Or that I think they, I know they contacted me when I was in town about providing shingles vaccine for patients. Uh, and I think the health department years back did, did the flu, flu vaccines. I'm not sure if they did any others. I don't think they did pneumonias or any Tdap or pertussis, whooping cough at all. Uh, but that's something if we did have the personnel and uh, as far as the health, public health nurse would be a big part of that. Did, I think we had, a, did we have a full-time health nurse back then, public health? It was like four or five years ago? Um, yeah. was it wasn't full-time. It was Dina. Dina, Dina? Dina yeah. Uh, I want to, yeah, I think it was 32 hours. Okay, well, she was the one that was in contact with some of the pharmacies to try to get the shingles vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, the old shingles vaccine had to be frozen. Uh, the new one does not, so that's a little bit easier. So where's the cost from all this typically come from? Is this uh, donated from these um, pharmacies typically? Mm -hmm. When you said she was getting them from them, or is well, well, most insurance. Do we have a budget right? for stuff like this, or what's Well, I, I don't think we have. The health department has a budget for that. I don't think we do, right? No. no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. However, uh, most uh, the pneumonia shots are covered by Medicare Part B. Mm -hmm. uh, the flu shots Part B. <clears throat> the shingle sh shots are Part D. The Medicare Part D plan. Uh, so, the, the people with insurance may be able to get that covered. And the, but it would be up to us to process that insurance claim? Well, it, if it was done by the health department, I would think so, yes. But as we did with some of the flu clinics, uh, we sort of subbed it out to the pharmacies. And to be honest, the pharmacies are, are gung-ho about doing this also, uh, providing clinics, providing... Uh, oh, okay. So that's different. So, you know, we, we could, you know, I, I certainly like the sound of being the promotional arm. Well, that's, but I, I'd that's, like to push the administrative part onto the well, people who do it right. for a regular that, basis. That's part of what I'd love to discuss. Yeah, that, know, was, that, board, that would be something I think that is certainly town, worthwhile. Yeah, as a board in the town, what, how would we like to approach this? Uh, especially without a help, without a public health nurse, it may be rather <clears> difficult <throat> to do internally. Sure, and, and the added the added paperwork that would come along with trying mm -hmm. to, trying to handle as well too, I think would be mm -hmm. would be a tough task to overcome. So yeah, I, if we can. If we could push the administrative part elsewhere and, and again be the informative part uh, okay. uh, in the process, that that certainly makes a whole lot of sense, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of get kind of everybody everybody's involved in that way. Yes, it makes yes. it a little bit easier. And you know, and that's something I don't know if Laura, you would be willing, or that would be nice if the public health nurse might be able to approach. I'm kind of in a situation where I kind of have to recuse myself. Sure, from that, your position uh, because of potential conflict of interest, but as far as you know, the promotion and uh, the working with the different maybe pharmacies or maybe other, I'd have to look into what other public health years agencies ago, would. Years ago, they used to get the vaccines from Tewksbury State Hospital, because I remember going with the public health nurse, but do they not do that anymore? We had to sign them out, like there were different vaccines. That was a long time ago. Like, over 10 years ago. I don't know. So, do you have vaccines here? Or? We have a flu vaccine. Oh, okay. I don't know. I remember going with Carol uh, Fiore. Carol Fiore, yeah. And we went to Tewksbury State Hospital oh, yeah. to get some type of 
hmm. to the state, you know, some type of vaccine. She had to sign them up, you know. And there were different ones, but I don't know what they offered back then. Hmm. But she was, it was more, she was more of a, like 30, 4 days a week or something. Hmm. So it was, okay, well, if, if the board is positive on that, I'll, I'll start looking into that and maybe some ways that we might be able to expose uh, some communication to the different other, and maybe with Jean and the other parts of the town. Yeah, and so if, if you can coordinate, you know, the best thing to do would probably be to coordinate dates with different pharmacies, right, for different vaccinations type of thing. Yep. Um, and, you know, we do have plenty of portable bills that go out that you could certainly mm -hmm. uh, add another piece of paper into mm -hmm. um, to help, help promote those. And I mean, some of the flu clinics that the pharmacies do, they actually would come to a senior center. Or, uh, and that's where maybe we could, through the senior center, work something where we could draw the people in and maybe they could just have dates yeah. that they could do that. That's how we did the, um, well, they had uh, a health, their, their own health fair and flu shots this year at the senior center. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we've done it that way in the past, but. Um, how was the attendance for that? Good, yeah. How was the, was the enough parking? I know it's tight. It, um, that lot fills up quick, and there's yeah. a lot hanging around there. Yeah, it, I'm sure <laughs> it was busy, but I didn't hear that there were any, any problems. Um, okay. They ran out of flu shots. Yeah. Point. Yeah, they ran out. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then in pr prior years, when we had the um, the other vaccines, the um, the senior center was a good place to, to offer those. So uh, the problem is so so busy down there. I know. Hard to get a it's hard to get a time slot without planning ahead. So it's good. This yeah. is good. Yeah, it is good. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, no, and I will look into that and see maybe uh, I have a little problem speaking with some of the pharmacies, but uh, maybe Laura and I could work work on that and see who we might be able to contact. Sure. Good. Very good. Let's see. Uh, also, the pesticides. Pesticide. Has everyone had a chance to go over the pesticide regulations? I know they're. I think they're on the web. They're on the website, correct? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And did now to have. We have been assigned a date, or is that tentative? The is that May first? Mm -hmm. May first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's just that I, in my schedule, I just, I just realized that I, that I may have a conflict on May first. How, uh, how steadfast is the May first date for the selectmen? Is that something that they may be able to move? To the next meeting? The packets go out the day after tomorrow. Okay. I don't know, she may have already posted the other packet. Okay. Tuesday. Tuesday. Next. Yeah, so you can always pull something off. Yeah, she can repost it. Um, okay. But that's handy either right here. Uh, well, before we take that step, I, I did want to talk a little bit about um, taking it past that point where you, we're uh, talking about implementing policy. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've kind of, I look through the regulations, I, I, I've um, gone kind of up and down on the information that's been provided to this board in regards to um, having this policy in place. Mm -hmm. And I keep coming back to one criteria that I, that I think really needs to always be met when we're discussing putting policy um, into place, a new policy that is, mm -hmm. which is the immediate uh, need and, and threat of whatever we're discussing, mm -hmm. um, there needs to have that um, that threat of it coming to fruition, so to speak. You know, you know, when you put in that policy regarding flavored tobacco, there was a clear need, there's a lot going on with the youth at the time, sure. there was a clear need um, driven there. I haven't found any need on, on this side of it though. So the problem I'm having wrestling with this is well I, I understand on the base basis of it what it's intended to do. My problem is I don't think it actually moves the needle. Mm -hmm. And so by not actually moving the needle any, by enacting it, the only thing we've done is put a, a burdensome policy onto uh, what's going to be homeowners that doesn't change any outcome. In other words, I, there's, no, there's been no um, 
there's been no talk that I haven't heard of any, any kind of issues coming up in town arising as direct result of, of fertilization that's going on right now. So I have a problem there telling, a, telling homeowners that they can't do something and it doesn't actually affect what it is we hoped it would affect. Yeah, yeah I think the, you're right. Probably the immediate effect of pesticide, either ingestion or exposure, is probably not an immediate concern. Uh, I think uh, the way I look at it is over the long period of time, probably the less, the less you can be exposed to it, the better. And in, on public land, do you want to be exposed to it while you're on, on a public right of way? Uh, and I, I understand your point as far as, yes, you, you probably don't have an immediate reaction to that exposure. But there are a lot of people and even residents that have an issue being exposed to that in a, in a public in a public way. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I, I wrestle with this one. To tell you the truth. And and you're right. There there is probably no immediate uh, ramifications from exposure to it, but repeated and prolonged exposure to pesticides especially in children, and probably pets, uh, I think does have some uh, negative ramifications. Have we, have we found any cases that have shown that? Well, there has been some research. I've done a little bit of looking at, uh, like for instance, some groundwater rates of pesticides. Uh, when children do get exposed to it, it, it uh, it, it may be harmful. A lot of people tr track it into the house, into the off the off of the wherever it is, into the house, onto the rugs, and then it gets ingested that way, inhaled that way. So th there are some cases that it can be n a negative effect from it. And again, it's it may or may not be immediate, but blood levels tend to rise uh, if children the the level of, of concentration in children uh, could be, uh, it doesn't have to be as high in children to be, uh, have to sure. have a negative effect as it would an adult. Right. And, you know, it, 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 it has happened. I mean, whether it has in Reading, I, you know, but, sorry? Would it be possible to require them that if they use the pesticides to put those little signs up, those little flags that say do not step on? Well, I think they do that anyway, don't they? They, they may do that, but just the fact that it's on a public way, uh, I, I mean, that's, that's the whole crux of this. We can't say anything to anybody about what they want to do on their own land, nor what I really want to. Uh, this is basically just keep it, keep it off the public, public way. Do you have any idea how many towns in our neighboring towns? I know, like, um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how many neighboring towns. I know. I think we got part of this. Newton, Newton has it. Newton, maybe Marblehead. Marblehead. There was a couple times that, that like do have that. Like. Yeah, I guess. Well, the state has already banned pesticides on school grounds. I think. Right? Uh, for, under certain circumstances, yes. Right. So, yes. Yeah, I think where it makes a ton of sense, right, is on um, publicly maintained land. Um, to me, that's just. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That's a no-brainer. Um, you know, we, we could easily enact something like that. The trouble I have is, is getting into, even though it's the town's land, which is the um, tree lawn and sidewalk, or even if you don't have a sidewalk, up to anywhere from 6 feet to 16 feet in some areas mm -hmm. um, of land that goes on that about someone else's front yard mm -hmm. um, that, that the town owns. There's the, there's the jump I have, I have a trouble um, have a lot of trouble with. The town maintained property is different. Those properties, while they're town owned, are have been maintained by the homeowner as a nice courtesy, quite frankly, to the town to, to keep it up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Which is very, which you know, it's in their it's in their interest. They want to have a nice presentation of their house. They don't want to mm -hmm. have have it you know look bad. Certainly. So um, that's the part that I have the biggest issue. That's the part where I. Where we have, where we're going to be telling them, well, there's no direct, immediate threat or impact that may come from this. Where you do want to put this burden on, well, your, on your care of, of public land. Well, it's the there is a sentence in the regulations which you probably seen. It, it does speak 
The town on the land that these regulations pertain to are sidewalks and tree lawns. I mean, that, that is part of the, the legislative regulations. Just sort of because we understand that it would be awful hard to delineate a six foot line to on, right. on your property. Okay, so, but, so it does, it, it's only dealing with this is, a tree lawn on a sidewalk. Uh, the, Essentially. Town, the town on the land that these regulations pertain to are sidewalks and tree lawns. That, that is part of the, the regulation, yes. Yeah. And you, at the hearing that we had, you did, there were some pretty, some pretty good opinions, pretty strong opinions on what from some of the residents. Uh, and we did get some uh, written opinions from other residents that that, that was what they desired. Uh, again, it's not an immediate, it's not an immediate thing that you can show. <clears throat> what do we have in there in the way of uh, fines, John? What, what's written up there? Well, we, we had discussed that months ago. Uh, it's Basically, like the fines that of any public health uh, violation, uh, any violates the provision of these pest, manage, pest management regulations shall be subject to a fine of fifty dollars for first offense and a hundred dollars for second and subsequent offenses. Uh, we, it was brought up, actually, I think by me to just have a warrant to have the first one be a warning, which I was yeah. at, the, at the time I was I was overruled, and we went with what what the normal violation rates were. And that's why this is now into the regulation. So how would we administer this? Um, let, me, let me paint an example. You, you, can, you can put this out there, and well, obviously you'd have to, right, to, to every household. Um, this is something that would have to be, some kind of literature would have to be given out to every household in the town to, to for them to understand that this is now a new policy mm -hmm. and that what the violations would be, what you can and can't do. Um, yeah, we could maybe even put that out with the DPW with a flyer that goes out with the... the, the this analysis. would have to be something separate. Mm -hmm. you're gonna, if you're going to find people, you're going to have to put something that's, that's completely separate in my book. I, mm -hmm. I don't think you yeah. want to put it as an add-in because a lot of those add-ins just get thrown away. Mm -hmm. um, so this would have to be a separate, stand on its own uh, piece of information. The problem that you start to run into is turnover. When folks turn over from town, from coming in and out of town, you can have a hard time saying we're going to give you finding somebody who had no clue what, what this was. Um, didn't you know? weren't in town when it happened. Didn't get the literature. Mm -hmm. um, and it, otherwise, you'd have to add on some kind of um, response to make them aware of uh, of what they. Need to and right, uh, but uh, the regulations all do also do state that they shall be subject to. Uh, does that leave? I mean, do the regulations allow for uh, a warning, just the way they're written? If you're subject to it. And it would probably be administered. Well, that's why we why we're going to the selectmen is because town council has opined that we don't have the ability to pass this Correct. because we don't have jurisdiction over town land. Uh, so how we would actually uh, address the selectmen, which we would need either their blessing to uh, address town land, or I, I don't know if they would, would pass this themselves. Hmm. And that's why the, we really haven't had a discussion with the selectmen yet, which is why I'd like to do that. Right. And you could go out in the real estate bill and the tax bill, like, because mm -hmm. that's all to home, you know, I don't know, I guess you have people renting too, I don't know, it's mm -hmm. hard to know. <clears throat> What, what's the typical uh, procedure for a, a new policy such as this that, that really you know, encompasses the majority of the town? 
Is there, is there, do we have a procedure in place for that? Um, I guess it depends what the legal, I would start with town council to understand what the legal notice requirement is. Right. Um, there would, I would assume there's something. Yeah, it seems like any, any kind of regulatory subject to fines, you know, requires a, some sort of a, uh, a process. We are dealing with it with the ban on plastic bags, mm -hmm. and we do have um, Jane Miller, um, works out of administrative services, and she's doing some of the communications planning for that. Okay. Um, but we, that's a general bylaw change, so we kind of do that routinely. This is a little bit different. It doesn't quite align with, with, with what we're really used to doing. So I'd want to double check it and make mm -hmm. sure we're following the correct procedure for public notice. Yeah, the, you know, the other, that's the other kind of aspect of it is the, <clears throat> proper public notice and an upkeep of the policy itself. Again, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say that I'm not in favor of putting this policy in place for the reason that it doesn't move the needle enough to warrant all the behind the scenes mm -hmm. uh, amount of effort and work it has to implement it. Um, okay. I, I, again, if we're, if we're going to see a great benefit from it, you know, to me those are things this, this body should absolutely be interested in doing. Um, but if we're really going to see a negligible benefit with a huge implementation. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me, um, just from a structural standpoint. So I understand you, you'd like to talk to the selectmen about it. I personally am not going to be in favor of putting this policy in place um, unless there's some evidence out that we don't have that says there, there is an immediate need, there, there is a great impact um, that would come from this. And, and so far, the only thing that we've seen is some um, trend uh, national statistics that talks more about the pesticide itself um, being harmful. Obviously, it always follows up by saying in large amounts. Mm -hmm. um, like anything that's misused, it can be harmful. Um, that's you know, certainly an understanding. Uh, but I, that's where my, the, the benefit doesn't seem to outweigh the implementation to me. Um, and, and it's a really a lopsided one in, in my estimation. So that's why I'm, I'm really not going to be in favor of putting this forward. Okay. Just, uh, the way I look at it too, it's just almost it's like a risk versus benefit uh, in the the, right. risk, the risk of long term exposure to pesticides. Uh, I think far outweighs the, uh, the, the 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 risk of the the problem. I, the benefit the benefits of pre of preventing that. Uh, I just think outweighs the risk of whatever steps that you may try to avoid it. I don't have a pet, but do people let their pets walk on the lawn? You know, it's town property, but where do you say, like, okay, now you can't go that far, and you keep the dog within, yeah. like, so many feet? Yeah, I just like, like I don't want my kid walk on anybody's grass, whether it's town yeah. property or... I just let my dog go on that strip, but, like, sometimes, you know, the pesticide, you don't know if, like, the lawn company has sprayed that. I don't know, like, um, they have the signs on the the lawns, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and it, 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 those pellets can be on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen, I, I know I've seen some of the pellets on the sidewalk uh, after they've applied it. And that's, that's kind of, I think, what the whole crux of what we're trying to yeah. prevent. Yeah, I think like, the Board of Health. Is it spillover? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. That's, you, you don't, you want to, you know, if you've got a child walking or a pet walking on the sidewalk, I would, I, I wouldn't want them to track something into the house that, that they've been walking on, out on the sidewalk. So what if, what if we made it for town, um, what if we implemented it a little, maybe a little bit um, simpler way, would be to implement it for town maintained property, obviously, um, would be one big part that would, that would encompass a lot, of, a lot of areas. And sidewalks, excluding tree lawns. In other words, keep it on the tree lawn, but not on the sidewalk. If there's spillover, that's when you're going to start to run into an issue. If, if the point is to try, if that's where the, the traffic is coming from and the pickup of this is coming from, I don't see why we couldn't exclude that, that portion of it. You mean just the side? Just, just the side, just the, the actual, sidewalk. yeah. Because on one aspect, I, I know we don't, you know, it does exclude those properties that don't have it 
um, a sidewalk. But that's still, well, to me, it's kind of the same thing. It's still, that, that's a piece that's being maintained by that property owner. And again, if it, I understand that long-term exposure um, certainly is harmful, but it's also, it's long-term exposure to high levels. Really, it's not so long-term, it's high levels of exposure, correct? Well, some of it does accumulate in the, some, some pesticides do accumulate in the body, but then they stay there long-term. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think we're implementing it to, to make money or to give people a fine. It's more prevention, especially with children. And I don't know how many children do we have in Reading. I don't know what the percentage of population is, but it's more like or pets, I guess. And well, I, I, I mean, anything I, small, you know. I, I think it was we grew it up as just sort of an awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're right. We're not gonna we're not gonna make much on the mm -hmm. fines. But as far as just an, a tool to make people aware that you really shouldn't be, you, should, you shouldn't have your pesticides go on the sidewalk. That, that was, I think, that's the whole point of what we, what we were trying to do. Uh, and along with the potential adverse effects over long periods of time of exposure to it, obviously, but you know, pay attention to what you're doing. Yeah, I, I, and I, I just don't know that it moves the needle enough for me. Um, I, I hear what you're saying about long-term effects, but the small portion of the land, uh, the effects are still going to happen for the kids if they're on the other portion of the land. Um, you know, it just it seems like it seems more of a burdensome policy than it is an effective one. That's the that's the, the hurdle I just can't keep get, I keep coming back to and I can't get over it. it. I guess it would be somewhat of a burden not to, you know, to 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 be careful where you where you put your pesticides. I mean, I don't know if, how much what kind of a burden, but uh, again, I think that the the benefit of being careful uh, would outweigh the the effort that it would take to, to try to avoid that from happening. How do we police it? That's going to be your job. So I just walk up and down the streets? No, 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 no. People, no. people would, lock, uh, would, would call the office to put so a, uh, right. this yeah, like to, to, to put in a complaint. Right, if someone put in a complaint. And then it'd be, on, it'd be on you to then go out and investigate to see if the, the complaint is worthy of an investigation of some kind or, or not. You know, if you, they would, I mean, that's, that's in the regulation also, that they would, contact the, the health department and it would be observed whether they thought, the, the health official thought that that was in violation of what the regulation is. And I would assume that, that would be you who would go and see. And if there were pellets all over the sidewalk, you'd, you'd want to say to the person, gee, we really, we can't do, we can't do this. Uh, how many calls you would get, I don't know. but. I mean, is it something we can call some of the towns that already have it in place and see like, how difficult it's been, you know, if it's, it has some benefits or, um, Yeah, it could be potentially call the health department, so I, mm -hmm. I think Marblehead and see what, what they have, what's happened with theirs since they've instituted it. I think it's been two or three years now since they've instituted it. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just sort of forward thinking and a lot of these other towns have had this policy for 10 or 15 years, mm -hmm. so we're kind of actually on the later side. So it's just sort of forward thinking, but it's it's just like if my child's walking, you know, like maybe someone's playing on their lawn with, but you know, if my child is walking, we don't want to expose them. And it's just sort of forward thinking, I think, you know, just pesticides and chemicals. And, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we, should we try to get any like specialists in that? Would you like to hear from a from a specialist or research from uh, what what pesticides actually do long term to to humans? Or would that would, would that? It, I'd, be, I'd certainly be curious to to hear um, to see one if there has been a 
I don't, I don't know how you could qualify for stuff. In the towns that have implemented it, there's been a quantifiable benefit. What do you mean um, as far as fewer, fewer disease? Yeah, any, I mean, anything. I mean, is there any kind of data that would point to a correlation between the two? I mean, it'd be tough to find, though. I mean, that would, that would be almost hard impossible. To, that would be hard to correlate to that. Which is too bad, because that would be, I think, some very useful information to have, um, certainly. I mean, I don't know if there's a study in towns that do have a regulation versus don't, and how you could correlate. I, that would be, that would be. Very, it's very difficult because it's such a widespread thing that you're, right. you're talking about, and there are different homes using different chemicals and than the other ones, and. Right. Um, yeah. I think you said already, like um, landscapers don't do that already. They don't spray the, the things they have. Like the companies that come in, they don't put it on the. They're not side. supposed They're not to. Supposed to. Right. I think they've already been following that. I don't know if that's a state policy or I know they've been following that. Cause I think that's yeah, I'm not sure. I'm I think that's sure. what you said, like in one of the meetings, you know, that they've been kind of spraying that a little bit of. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean the same thing like with Roundup and all this stuff, you know, like Roundup now it's like bad, but you know, it's all this. Well, I think commercially they that they can't do anything to town land commercially anyway, correct? I mean, that's isn't that a, must be a bylaw that's of some sort that they can't you, you can't do anything to town land, correct? I, I just. Um. You know, this, that's what sure that. I don't know if there's anything in place other than the town just simply isn't paying for it. Uh, <laughs> I just vaguely remember some discussion about this, but mm -hmm. I, mm. yeah, I have a vague memory that there was something. Maybe it's that it's not that you can't spray on town land. It's that the DPW makes a practice of not putting chemicals on town land. I thought that uh, th again, it's vague memory, but. If my memory is correct, um, that's what I recall. I mean, I mean, if there's something like that in place, you can use that. Well, the town hasn't been doing this yeah. for such and such a year, so we're trying to just, you know, bring that policy further and just ask you that you don't spray that land just for people walking by. Yeah, I'm not sure the tree, the tree um, lawns. How many feet does that? Cover, like, or is it just? Well, tr the tree lines are pretty well defined there with the um, anything that has the sidewalk on it already. Oh. So you have the street, the curb, the little lawn, and then the sidewalk. Okay. And so that little lawn is considered the tree lawn. Oh, so it kind of defines itself oh, between okay. the, the sidewalk oh. and the street. Oh, that's um, the but okay. all throughout town, the town owns anywhere from you know six feet to some to some years I, I recall upwards of sixteen feet. Off of the street onto a property that has no sidewalk. Yeah, like I don't have a sidewalk. Yeah. So. so it's all it varies from from one one property to the next. So it's, it's kind of all over the place. So there's that's why that that part is extremely difficult yeah. to we don't use right, pesticides. To monitor. Yeah, I haven't used them in like 20 years since mm -hmm. my daughter. We did before, and once she had her, I said no pesticides. Our lawn looks really nice, <laughs> but like you know, I don't know. And I know organic has been a big thing coming up yeah. lately. Okay. Um, I haven't read too much on organic um, fertilizers. Are those similar in nature as far as toxicity? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, they, there are lists of accepted uh, pest, pesticides, organic pesticides. Okay. There are lists, and that's one of the things that it does in our regulations, uh, I think, excludes those. Yeah. So to, to me, the two biggest things are the implementation of it, right, as well as the uh, enforcement of it. So those are the two big things that I, I really, I really would need to see some, um, if not creative ideas, some, some solid ideas to, to reduce that um, for the town. And, it, you know, and I agree with you going back on it, I think. Uh, Any time a first offense has has a fine levied on it for something of, of this nature, which again, you know, but over the long term may move the needle, but doesn't really move the needle in general um, without it without being exposed to it. That's a tough thing to levy on somebody on 
on round one. So, you know, I'd certainly be in favor with you um, that, that the first fine um, is not, is a warning. Uh, I don't understand. And, you know, the other part of it is if you're going to implement something like this, we absolutely should make sure that uh, the policy, to me, the policy would need to probably be, be presented to each and every um, home that we have here and, and or if there's a business that, that, that would pertain to as well, I guess. Um, and certainly laid out, I, I think, maybe a little bit more bold or separate sheet on the, on the front page, what would be acceptable. In other words, you know, you couldn't do this, but here are the ones that you could do it with. Um, you mean the individual? Yeah, yeah, well, give them, you know, give them the option. Don't just tell them you can't do something. Show them what they can do. Well, it, it does, it, those pesticides that meet the criteria for toxicity category one or category two as defined by the U.S. Environmental Protection in section 156.10 of part 156 of title 40 in the code of federal regulations. So, there you go. <laughs> but yes, as far as brand names. At least maybe, give them the top three. <laughs> the, the brand names we could probably find out right. which ones would, would, would qualify, yes. <laughs> okay. So if we can, if we could certainly work on those two, to me those two big hurdles, which is the implementation of it and the enforcement of it, um, you know, I, I think we could probably craft something. Yeah, I mean, maybe the fine doesn't have to be like that. Yeah, and, um, yeah I mean, I, I think any time a, a fine out of gate is, yeah. a, is a pretty strong thing for something of this nature. And I think, like, definitely if the town has chosen not to put pesticides, that's like a pretty big, you know, over the years they've stopped doing it, that also, and other towns have stopped doing it. Those are some of the reasons. Like there's knowing that they cause cancer. I mean, you know, and, mm -hmm. and smaller children because they're smaller body and animals that are small. Doesn't maybe affect you know the same amount. It's not going to affect me, but two-year-olds right. going to affect them. Sure. For the same exposure. So I, I guess we we can work on that. We I, I'm just not quite sure, and I don't know if we could talk with with Jean or but this. Presenting to the selectmen, uh, what are they? What are they expecting from us to present to them? Uh, well, this was something that you had asked to be on their agenda. Okay. So we, that's why we had, um, scheduled it for May first. But um, it's entirely up to you. What I guess the board of selectmen is probably going to want to know what what they're being asked okay. to to take action on or you know, okay. consider. Um, so it probably makes sense to have something for the packet. Um, there's no problem changing the date. Um, okay. It hasn't been posted and it's no big deal. Um, the next date would be May 15th. Okay. And then the packets go out um, Thursday before, so that would be... That would be... Um, May 10th. So would we like to make any specific changes or any type of uh, additions to that? I mean, I think I mean? the fine, it could be, like you said, the first one it could be a warning or something, you know, maybe the fine. Like it's totally illegal, but you know, we just like to. Mm -hmm. um, just to add, on May 15th, that's at least according to my calendar, and I don't know if I have this right, is that the next board health meeting? Correct. Okay. So um, it would be the same night that the board meets to go to the board of selectmen. Okay. So if we are going to present them with something, we should probably, this evening, figure out exactly what we want to present them with. Um, yeah, we'd have to. Or, well, if two of you want to work on it, I think that's okay. No. No? No. no. Two's too many. That's Two's a, too many. That's <laughs> a <laughs> Three-person board. That's a quorum. There aren't three-person <laughs> boards. Um, yeah. 
And so ideally they are going to want to know exactly what we were asking of them from, you know, from a verbal standpoint. So that would have to be, yes, we'd have to work on that. I, and my guess would be town council would have to also approve it. Yeah, I mean, can they can they give us uh, can they give us the right to dictate town land by via our that that's the crux of I think of the, the issue is town council has determined that we have no jurisdiction over town land. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think he was fine with everything else because we worked we worked it down uh, to what he was. I think he had four or five issues with it, which we, we worked down to his satisfaction. And then it was basically, well, you don't, you don't have jurisdiction over town land. You have no, right. uh, which, uh, as you said, the qualifications for public health, uh, is, is this a reasonable regulation to protect public health? Uh, that, may be, that may be called into question. We may think it is, but I, evidently town council didn't think it met that, didn't meet that qualification for us to have, uh, to, to not have to get the selectmen's uh, approval. Sure. Will they have um, in, in June, June meetings? Do uh, they have two? They must. Yes. Do we want to go to the next meeting? Do you want to set a specific, um, specifically to work on the language of that? We can do that. And, and I can look, look into them for a June meeting. Yeah, and I mean, I've, I'll have to, I've got a couple of names of people that specialize in the toxicity of pesticides. I should get in touch with them and maybe they could give me, give us uh, some indications of exactly how and certainly timing wise um, as part of that implementation process this would be a, this would be a horrible timing wise to, to implement it now horrible in terms of um, what people already have set in place um, with with whatever companies that they're using mm -hmm. the winter time well while, while these things are not in use is probably a great time from an education standpoint mm -hmm. before the season not not right now where where people have already seen the trucks Oh yeah, they're, well, that's they're, they're flying around everywhere already. Well, yeah, and it's been it's probably been a year, I think, since we really started, you know, going. That, that's sort of what we I was hoping. Maybe right, you, I know you guys had a lot of history before Heidi and I on this as well too. Yes, you um, know, you were trying yeah. to get this we, done for the spring, you know. Yeah, we <laughs> yes, and we did work on it all last last summer to, for, to try to get it to in this in a ready state for the for the winter. Right, but that. That just hasn't worked out that well. The meetings in June are June 5th and June 19th. And the June 19th meeting aligns with your your June board of health meeting. Okay. Okay. All right, why don't we work on that then? And and I will work on some toxicity data. Okay. Um, who has this talk? Do you have this talk? Then? It's on the website. It's on the website. Okay. Yeah. And I guess we'll have to take that off there for May, us off the docket of the selection. Yeah, that's no problem. And when's the May meeting? That's May 15th. This is May 15th. Is that, um, are we in the library right now? Here. You're here, okay. Okay. That's good. We'll go in, we'll go in uh, to the, possibly the selectmen in June. That would, that, that will be fine with them as well as we, because I know uh, Barry had mentioned that he was sort of looking forward to hearing from the Board of Health at, at the selectmen's meeting. So we'll, if we can postpone that until June, we'll work on this and we'll have a, a, a full report for them. Okay. Is everybody okay with the May 15th of next meeting? Yep. I am. Yep. Yeah, that one I might just be a little bit late because I'm in Boston that day, but it's okay. 
and we will, we will be signal. we'll be here. Are we, are we gonna we're yeah. doing Tuesdays here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> And let's see, well, Laurie, have you got our health agent report? Yes. Um, well, this was for February and March. Mm -hmm. We had 63 food inspections. That covers the reinspection, the complaint. There's actually no animal inspections, but I'm going to fall on that. We only had two flu shots. Like John mm -hmm. said, they're windling down. We met our um, deliverables for the 3B. On staff updates, Sue Swansberger has given her notice and her last day was April 15th. So we now have Maria Tamaglia, who's a full-time nurse in Malden, who's covering until we find someone full-time, if anybody knows anybody. Same thing, we're meeting all our action plans and our deliverables. Um, so anybody who's trickling in, like um, the schools came in for their permits for their snack shacks and all that. Mosquito helicopter is going over town this Tuesday, so tonight. Tonight? Yep. And would they generally stick to the wetlands in the forest areas or is it just all the town? Actually, they have a, a personal temple newsletter. Would, would they, would, if someone... Okay. If someone objected to a spray, would they have to? Would yeah. they have to contact? Yep, they have to contact us in writing. All right. Has the, there been many? A couple. Okay. About that, a dozen maybe. Is that the truck? You mean? Yep. Michael? Well, those are the helicopter. Those are helicopter, yeah. yeah. But yeah. they used to have a truck down there, a truck that goes by too in the summer. They, no, they walk it. They walk. Oh, I, I thought they had a truck too. Yeah, because we, I'm around shut not only just like every time I hear it. They used to be. I mean. I knew North Reading would come down my street and then go back. Uh, I didn't. I thought that was North Reading, but that was, no. that's the state. The state. Yep. Mm -hmm. So they have the helicopter that flies over. If you want to be on the do not call, do not spray list, you have to send something in writing, and then I forward that to the state. And then they, they actually walk the wetlands. Mm -hmm. Now, any idea if on the if you ask them to a do not spray? How do they do that by helicopter? Well, yeah, what area, how much area would that encompass that they wouldn't spray? Do we, no. I don't know how they do that. I went with the same thing. They do it at night in the dark? They mm -hmm. And it's tonight, okay. Okay. Yeah. Unless it gets really windy for some reason, but it's, it's supposed to be between tonight and Friday, but it is scheduled for tonight. And is this a biological? They're not pesticides. It's a biological agent that maybe kills a lot of larvae. Yeah, while they're breeding, like yeah. the beginning of the season. Yeah, it's a safe, stay suspended in water for 28 to 48 hours. BTI. Mm -hmm. Updates on tobacco. We have done all our compliance checks and we had no underage sales. And the last thing is Lincoln and Prescott. Hmm, yeah. yeah. That's, is that, how's the dust been with that? I'm going to water it down. Yeah, it looks like they got most of it off site yeah. as of now. Yeah. Were there any complaints from neighbors at all, or is that, because I mean, I just saw, I, I watched a little bit of the selectmen that someone had come and asked the selectmen about it, and I just wasn't sure. Did we did we investigate any of the, uh, the the dust? Their concerns about what was going on with the dust. Well, they had um, concerns about the dust, but it was um, they had the water plan where they were carrying it from the fire holes that they were spraying it all down like they were supposed to. The state's been on it. I sent everyone the link that everyone mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. And now you sent me a link for the, the from the DEP. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't really see much on that. Uh, it was.
was sort of the ID number, and then it was just like a page. Was there was an actual report with that too, or was that? Yeah, if you click onto it, it'll take you right to all the documents that are on file on the DEP website for that project. Okay. And you can access everything on the anyone can. I got what you got, yeah. yeah. It was just like one. Okay, because it was like I, when I, I put it on the screen, and it came up with like the ID number and then the. Yeah, and then if you click on it, it gives you all the documents, and then you have to click on each document separate. Click on the ID number? Yep. Uh, okay. You click on the ID number, and then it brings up each document. You can click on each document to see everything about their asbestos, their remediation plan, their dust, everything. And it's where they've met all their remediation Qualifications with from I, I haven't had an awful lot of chance to go into what their plan was, but so far everything is up to their plan. With the, what they said they were going to do is, is being done. Yeah, I think the um, the fact that there's a, a licensed site professional, professional engineer that deals with this kind of an issue, um, that's the state requirement, mm -hmm. and uh, that's sort of the first measure of protection to the public, knowing that this um, expert is out there on the site anytime they're doing anything. Mm -hmm. They cannot um, work on the site without supervision by the LSP. Um, so that's the first, in my mind, the first protection of the public. Sure. Um, what the Department of Environmental Protection requires is that Anything that they do at this site is in compliance with um, jargon, MCP, the Mass Contingency Plan, which basically says that you have to follow the state protocol when you discover anything in on a site as far as any kind of soils issues. And so um, uh, in addition, they, ha they require a, uh, a RAM, you know, an overall plan, from the applicant of how they're going to deal with this and what they're going to do to, you know, work around it and treat it and remove where they need to remove and all that. So there's there's like a multi-pronged approach that this state regulation, you know, requires that the developer follow. Um, there was some concern at a recent board of selectmen meeting that I was in, in attendance where they felt as though the town should be more proactive. There were comments made that mm -hmm. why isn't the town doing more? And um, that's why we thought it was important for the Board of Health to have some discussion about it. And when I contacted um, the uh, person that wrote the letter saying that to these developers, hey, this is what you're responsible for. Um, her name is Ida Babruti. Um, and she wrote what's called a letter of responsibility to the developer. And, and we were copied on it. And she's from the DEP? She's from the DEP, okay. yeah. She's from uh, an environmental engineer at the Bureau of Waste Site Cleanup here in mm -hmm. Wilmington, the Northeast uh, Regional Office. And um, it, the tracking number and her uh, phone number, all her letters mm -hmm. on that same link. Okay. Um, and this letter is dated March 27th, where she was asking for the remediation plan or the um, response plan. And uh, so at this point, it hadn't been filed. And I believe it was filed within the last week or so. Okay. So everything is up there. They've done that. Oh, yes, it's filed, yeah. Uh, Friday. I was, no, it's Friday. Friday. Yeah, I was in the Friday. office on yeah. Friday, and I was on the website, and, and I came across it. I think it had just been filed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, um, so what, what she told me is that sometimes local boards of health will review the RAM and provide any kind of comments to the DEP. Um, so that's, that's one possible way that the board could, um, you know, take a look at this. Yeah, I'm going to have to go. I, I tried to get into that, and I, I wasn't able for whatever reason, huh. so I, I will... I'll get into it again. Okay. So. Did you get it? Um, yeah, I think it, yeah. So um, if, if you want to have individual board members, if you have any comments, 
um, send them to okay. Laura. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do it that way, and then that way, if there's any comments or anything, I can put them all together. She can put them together, and at least we can give them to the board of selectmen because um, I think they're going to discuss it May first. Now, okay. if it makes okay. more sense, since the board of health is going to be there, I think they thought the board of health was going to be there on the pesticide, so mm -hmm. if the board of health isn't going to be in attendance on May first. Um, something in writing or postponing until June. Or I, I'm not sure how you want to handle that. As far as with this? If there's any comments, there's any comments. because like I say, the, the Board of Health, I mean the Board of Selectmen, there were comments made there from the public and from at least a couple of the board members, maybe only one, I can't remember, but um, that, you know, we should be doing more on the local level. You know, kind of looking at, mm -hmm. I think, to the Board of Health mm -hmm. for any kind of commentary or any kind of guidance on is there something more that we should be doing? Mm -hmm. Is the DEP's role enough? Is there, that they, a comment was made that, you know, maybe the building inspector should be getting involved in this. Um, well, we did have a concern with the rodents that went out. Yes. And that, you know, which seems to have. We've had no issues on that. Yeah. One single no. complaint. No, and I mean I can understand people being concerned, but um, I, I don't. You know, if if I were to send a building inspector to go and be at the site, which he does go down there pretty regularly, mm -hmm. his expertise is not in environmental engineering. His right. expertise is in construction. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know if that would be a good use of his time. This to is a state agency. This is right. a state, so they yeah. Would think that they would have more. Like, I don't know anything about that. You know, this is a whole that, very, know. very specific yeah. part of environmental engineering that is highly technical. And they have oh, yeah. different people at the state level that were handling each aspect of it. So there was one person just assigned to their asbestos. Yeah. yeah. One person just assigned to their dust. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a, chemicals it's a very it's specialized, all. specialized yeah, and area. And they take it very seriously. Yeah, yes. yes. And yeah, everything so. is public knowledge. You can go right on that link and see everything. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so, I'm, I mean, I'm happy to have the building inspectors stay on top of what's going on down there, but this doesn't quite align with what we do in, in building. This is a right. little more technical and mm -hmm. environmental engineering related. And we said just May, um, June 19th, right? For the Board of Selectmen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. okay. okay Let's good. try for that, yes. So if you want to look them over, if you have any comments on those reports, just let me know one way or the other, even if you don't have any comments. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other topics of discussion? I don't have any myself. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Lori, is, your, is that your report? Yeah, because we've jumped around a few things. We already have the next board meeting. Yep. And we've jumped to the discussion for the pesticides previously. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other topics at all? Okay, I guess we can adjourn for this meeting. Motion to adjourn. All right. Thank you all, thanks for the information.